Hello, everyone. We're good on audio? Yes? Yes, good. Okay. Uh, thank you for attending. Um, so, yeah, I'm Ben Seregi, um, a solution architect with Databricks. Um, been a Python user since, uh, I want to say, 2006, maybe? 2007. Um, and, uh, yeah, so... Um, I used to be a um, practicing data scientist. Now I do more on the training side. Uh, I have some former colleagues here uh, in the room, so that's it's good to see. Um, okay, before we start, um, you know it's, the, the topic is koalas. It's a it's a new open source framework for running Pandas API on top of uh, Apache Spark. That is taking your um, single-threaded pandas code and paralyzing it using uh, Spark as the underlying engine, right? That's ultimately what we're doing. Um, so before we go, um, I just want to get a quick sort of understanding of, of the room here. Um, those familiar with pandas? Good, that's like two-thirds of you. And those familiar with Spark? Okay, okay. So maybe I'll do a very quick intro to Spark before moving on. So pandas, no need. Um, Spark is, is, of course, an Apache project. Uh, it was open sourced in 2009. Um, even though its uh, underlying engine is JVM, it's Scala, it's, everything's written in Scala, um, Python is a first-class supported language on Spark. Now, Spark is an open source, uh, fully distributed in terms of compute and memory, um, general purpose, computational engine, right? It's part of the, um, the big data ecosystem that's been around for, for over a decade or so, um, right? As I mentioned, Python is first class. In fact, uh, it might, might get bumped up as, as zeroth class uh, soon. We'll, uh, we could talk about that uh, later. Um, but um, it's fully distributed, right? So it's a big data technology. It's scale out, uh, paralyzed across multiple servers. But not only that, across multiple cores. So if you have a cluster of 10 nodes, each of which has 80 processor, uh, 8 processors, 10 nodes, 8 processors, you could run your now pandas code on top of these 80 cores in one go. And you don't need to change your API. You just copy and paste. Yeah, you just have to import really Qualys. OK, so what's the motivation here? Um, Really to, to really scale Pandas. Pandas is great, um, but, um, um, but as you know, it's a, it's a single-threaded framework. It's, uh, it's memory-bound by the server that you're using, right? So if you only have uh, 4 GB of RAM to play with on your, uh, on your laptop, that's it. That's as big as a data set that you can work with, right? Um, and, um, and yeah, so we're, really, we're trying to really scale out pandas workloads using a distributed uh, infrastructure and that's spark so this koalas um, as i mentioned it's an open source project uh, it was it was announced it was released on github in april 2019 and since then we've seen over 300 patches and uh, um, I think it's, uh, that's actually this is kind of an old slide. It says 6,000 daily downloads. Uh, it's closer to 8,000 now. Yeah, so it's, it's ramped up very quickly within the past, uh, what, six months, right? Um, so Koala's architecture um, as a whole, it is, uh, it is on Spark, right? So it's, it's Python library. You can do a pip install, bring it in. And, uh, and ultimately, you're picking up the Pandas API and uh, using it on top of Apache Spark, right? And you get all the bells and whistles that are available um, within, within Spark itself, okay? So um, a few call-outs. Um, so uh, I'll talk about some of the differences between uh, Pandas and, and PySpark and, uh, and how um, Koalas itself is trying to be really more Pythonic, you know? So, um, You'll see that uh, PySpark itself is, is all about camel case, while you know, the Pythonic way is, is, is taking the snake case. Great. Um, um, 
NumPy is fully supported in terms of the, the API. You can bring in any sort of NumPy object and, and play around with it. And the docs and uh, the style of, of, of the documentation itself is very much in line with, with the Pi Data project. Okay, so, uh, so as a whole, Qualos is quite Pythonic in, in its ways. Um, so, um, yeah, Pandas, as you know, yeah, is, again, as I mentioned, is, is a bit, uh, um, it's a bit peculiar, right? It's ultimately a C++ library um, that, that's being leveraged. Um, but here we're trying to go um, in supporting the two frameworks, that is Pandas and Spark, we're making Panda first, right? So any consideration, any uh, trade-off that we have to play with um, in terms of the API design, it's gonna go, uh, we're gonna take the, the Pandas approach, right, just right off the bat. Um, so you'll see that uh, that going, you know, we're going against, in, in some cases, the, uh, the Spark way of doing things. Okay. Um, guardrails, yes. So, um, again, uh, Qualys is there to scale, to make Pandas scalable, right? Uh, to perform at scale. But, um, I mean, there have to be a few considerations made because when you start paralyzing things, you know, it's not easy, it's, it's, a, it's a challenging task. So um, as a whole, um, everything's meant to be um, implemented with safe methods at scale, right? Um, except a few, uh, basically, um, few caveats. Anything that's not paralyzable, we're not gonna play with, we're just gonna leave it as is. Uh, so there are for certain processes, transformations that need to be done in sequence yeah, uh, and in those scenarios, we're just gonna basically have those run as, as single-threaded jobs. Yeah? But, uh, but you'll see as a whole, most of your uh, standard pandas workflows are going to be paralyzed. Most of the API has been, has been uh, um, uh, sort of moved over to PySpark yeah? using this, this pandas framework. Okay. Um, some, some big differences, um, I'll start with the, with the, on the bottom first, uh, so PySpark. Um, so as I mentioned, it, it, um, PySpark itself is an API that leverages Spark. Spark itself is within Scala, right? So as a result, PySpark sort of takes over some of these, the, the Scala uh, API and, and, uh, and way of doing things. Um, um, it supports full, full ANSI SQL. That's a, that's a big deal within, within Spark. Um, whereas, whereas Pandas, um, it was, you know, it came out of, uh, yeah, it was born out of need, right? Uh, it, was, uh, it, was, it was a sort of tack on to what NumPy and SciPy couldn't provide, right? Uh, NumPy and SciPy are great, uh, but where it came to tabular data, they were a bit, uh, they were a bit limited, right? So um, uh, that was kind of a tack on it, if you will, uh, on top of NumPy, uh, um, NumPy. So very different origins, yeah? One's coming, uh, trying to extend Ni uh, the NumPy ecosystem, the other extending the Scala data frame uh, ecosystem. Okay. So um, some differences here. You'll see how kind of it's, what's, uh, What's, uh, what, the, what some of the issues are here, yeah? Um, first of all, um, within, within Pandas, everything is, almost everything is mutable. You can come in, change things on the fly, you know, basically uh, cobble any sort of variable you have with something else, no problem. Um, in Spark Data Frames, that's uh, not so much. You ultimately have to come in and build a whole new data frame. Um, and that's, that can be challenging, you know? Um, just lo looking at some of the API differences, say adding a column. Um, the, on the left here, uh, where's my mouse? Yeah. So we're adding this column C to, the, to a pandas data frame, and that's, say, the sum of these two columns, A and B. Pretty straightforward. On the uh, PySpark side, a um, bit more cumbersome, yeah. Um, yeah, this one's really nice. Renaming columns, you know, you just say, you know, you get the column names, you know, just pulling them out. Here, uh, well, yeah, that's actually uh, just, just selecting columns. On this side, you have to come in, 
do a select, you know, it's very sequel kind of base, give it an alias and uh, yeah. Um, and, then, and, then that, and then rewrite all this back into a new data frame because that data frame is immutable. So, yeah. Um, count values, and if you guys use this, I, use, I used to use this a lot. It's basically, it's one of the top things you can do. It's basically a, a group by an account in one go, right? On pandas, that's it. You just do count values, uh, and value counts, and that's it. Does it for you. Here you have to say group by, my column, count them, order it by the count, and then do some sorting. It's, yeah. Um, yeah. So those coming from the pandas world find this quite ugly. Yeah. And I agree with you. Yeah. Okay. So another, another quick example here, some differences. Here we're going to read a CSV file. Yeah, within on the pandas left side. Um, we're going to name some of these columns um, x, y, and z1, right? And we're going to say we're going to create a new column x2, which is just a square of this uh, first column x. Okay, very straightforward. It's almost like writing math. Yeah, great. On the PySpark side, yeah, just reading it becomes challenging. Yeah, you have to give it all these options. Da da da. Um, you have to take that, uh, what was read, that CSV read, you have to cast it to, again, to a data frame, even though it's a data frame itself, you have to cast it to another data frame with these column names, and then you have to create a new column, um, which is the product of those, that, that X column, and push it into a new data frame again. Immutable, right? So that's how it is with PySpark. Okay? Now comes in Qualys. I'm going to do a import databricks qualus as KS, and that's it. That's the change. Instead of PD over here, um, that's, the, that's the alias for pandas in, in this case, I'm just going to use KS. And from then on, the rest of the API, the API is the same. Right? So you could, you could, in essence, do a lot of cut and pasting of your pandas code, um, replace PD with KS, or better yet, you don't even have to do that. You just say, import qualas as PD. <laughs> right? And you kind of just import it. You can now do cut and paste with your code. Yeah. That's, that's also what we're getting to. Of course, there are a few, few of these APIs, a um, uh, few of these methods that have yet to be uh, implemented. Yeah. So you know, if you do uh, a blind cut and paste, you're going to hit one line that's like, oh, you know, method not found kind of thing. Um, but, uh, but yeah, as a whole, I mean, that's, that's the ultimate goal to, to take your pandas code, just, just straight copy and paste it over to a spark environment and have that executed in parallel, uh, you know, multiple cores and, and also distributed in memory as well. Right. So you have your, your data set is now partitioned, um, in memory on very, on a, on a set of servers. Okay. Good? Demo time? All right. Demo gods, play quick prayer to the demo gods. Okay. So we're here in Databricks. Um, so some of you guys might know Databricks itself is uh, basically um, a service provider. It, it, it gives you Apache Spark as a fully managed service, as a, as a cloud service available on Azure and AWS. So I'm in here, I have a small cluster running. Um, this guy's pretty small. I got, uh, so I'm just running it across eight cores in this case, yeah? Um, eight cores and I have 28 GB of RAM, yeah? Um, good, ready to go. So we're gonna parallelize this on uh, just, just a few cores, yeah? Um, so if I may, I'm gonna clear my results here. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna import pandas. I'm going to get in NumPy 2, Koalas, and you'll see I'm going to jump back, in, back and forth between them. You know? um, and I'm going, to, um, I'm going to disable warnings because I'm going to play around with Arrow. Those familiar with Arrow? Um, it's part of yeah, pa it's a Pandas um, UDF optimization uh, framework uh, by, by, by Wes himself. Yeah. OK, um, Pandas, as you know, supports uh, uh, series as well. It's not just data frames, but also series. Yeah. So here we go. We're gonna do the same thing. Uh, all good. So the first call is gonna be a little warm up. 
So give it a second um, because we are, we are uh, getting, uh, getting this guy up and running. Yeah, first call is going to be a warm up. And, and by the way, those of you familiar with Jupyter, this is very much, this is a, this is a Databricks notebook, uh, very much uh, similar to Jupyter. I can come in, uh, I've marked down here, I can, you know, do a little quick hello world or something. Um, give, it, give it a few thingies. Yeah, whoops, misspelled my world. Uh, let's see. I think my, my cluster was a bit cold. I should have warmed it up a second ago. Uh, whoops, oh yeah, of course case is not defined. I didn't import it. Okay, let's do another import there. <clears throat> Good, import went through. And here's my S series. Um, and it comes out as nice. Uh, so yeah, as, as, as right away, yeah, you see it's a, it's like it was actually a Spark job that was executed, right? And here it is, it's a bunch of floats. I, throw, I threw a NAN in there for, for good luck. Um, here's a standard, you know, create data frame style, right? Um, I'm gonna give it three columns, um, two of them integer, one of them a uh, bunch of strings. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do a nice print of that in a second. There it is. Again, everything's a Spark job. Um, so this is just like how Pandas uh, is rendered within Jupyter, right? Um, so same sort of thing. Um, give it a range. So here now I'm taking a, a pandas, right? This is a pandas uh, for a method that we're calling, date range. It's gonna give me a bunch of dates. So now we can even go back and forth, start uh, interchanging them. Um, yeah, so that's my dates. I'm going to now uh, do another thing. I want to create a bunch of random numbers. Oh, okay, yeah, against doing pandas. Good, we're still in pandas world. Now, I'm gonna actually convert that pandas data frame to a Qualys data frame. So I'm calling this KDF, yeah? So this guy, we're now, so right, the second I ran this, it just printed it out, it was, it was actually running as a single threaded call, right? If I were to rerun it, you don't see any spark coming up, right? It's not a spark job. Here now, the second, if I were to get you the types, it's actually gonna tell you what it is. It's now a Koala's data frame, yeah? And if I were to print it, now it's actually gonna do a lazy evaluation, so it's actually gonna run the job now, and now it's a Spark job, yeah? Good, let's do, um, you know, there's different approaches. Here, for example, is you can now go even um, um, to create a Koala's data frame from a Spark data frame. So this is now Spark. I'm actually taking what was there earlier, this guy. Um, I'm taking the pandas. I'm going pandas to Spark to Koalas. Yeah? So this is pandas. We're going to cast it, basically, to a Spark data frame. Good. So this is now all Spark, pure Spark. If I were to, to print it, display it, there it is, the same data set. Um, now I can take um, that which was there, this is the Spark data frame, cast it to Qualys. Yeah. Now it'll come back, it'll start looking like pandas again, if I were to print it. Right, again, this is panda style. Um, for the sake of time, let's do, I want to get some data viz as well. Um, Okay, here's the data, so we're gonna actually go, go play around with it. So standard now, standard um, Pandas API, right? Getting the indexes, yeah, straightforward, getting column names. Um, you wanna cast it to a NumPy array? Yeah, now it's actually, right? Standard, standard NumPy stuff. Yeah, those, those NumPy fans, you should find this very, uh, very uh, familiar, okay. Here's one, here's now, this could be actually a heavy task, describe, right? Gives you, gives you a few things, gives you some basic statistics of all the columns available, right? Your, uh, your count, min, max, standard deviation, percentiles, that sort of thing. This now is actually quite, can be quite a heavy task given your data set, right? Especially if it's, if it's single threaded. 
um, yeah, just something like uh, just you know, standard deviation is you know, even percentiles. Percentiles you you're ultimately doing um, a sort at some at some point. So that then itself is actually quite heavy. Uh, but now, regardless of data size, this task becomes uh, quite quite trivial because yeah, you're, you're leveraging uh, the distributed power of Spark in the back. You know, transposing the data set. Good. Yeah, um, do a quick sort, sorting by value. Yeah, let me get to yeah this stuff. Yeah, sorting by B. Yeah, B got sorted in ascending. Um, Reindexing. So now I'm taking. So take a look here. I'm going back to my pandas data frame that I had. I'm reindexing it. I'm adding, uh, you know, the columns of of, of a previous one. Okay, uh, adding one to this to all these, um, casting it from pandas to koalas, and then a print. Okay, um, added some stuff here. These guys, let's call them E. Threw in some nans, threw in some dates. Um, I'm going to drop nans, the NAs, not numbers. You know, very very standard. You know, that's that's the way of viewing it. There we go. Um, fill them back in with a value five, if need be. So it should be fives in row E and column E. Good, good, good. Yeah, the, this should be all standard pandas. Uh, the panda users, this is your, this is your daily stuff, right? Um, doing like a mean, whatever, yeah. Okay. Oh, some now some Spark configurations. So there's arrow in the back, um, which which really does paralyze uh, pandas UDFs. Um, by default, arrows is, so here, look at this. We actually have, um, you can enable arrow execution on Spark. This is the default. Yeah. The default is enabled. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm just going to keep it as is. Um, and let's do this. Um, so that's just fetching, that's just fetching the old one. I'm going to sort of hard stamp, you know, the enable. And I'm just going to create a range, 30,000 or 300,000 numbers, right? It's just, just a, this is now, a, it's a koala's range. It's, just, you know, you can think of it as NumPy, yeah. Um, but this in itself is going to be paralyzed. And I'm going to cast it to, to pandas. Yeah? So I'm going to generate it in parallel and then sort of collect them all and then return it as a pandas data frame. Okay? And we're going to time this thing. Okay, took 155 milliseconds. Okay, um, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to turn off this arrow optimization. Okay, run the same thing. Uh, let's give it a second now. Yeah, now it becomes a big challenge. Now it took, yeah, it really took, uh, took a whole second for for the back end to, to sort this out. So what is that? A factor of uh, eight slower? Yeah. Okay, let me put it back in. Um, good, other standard stuff. Here's a new data frame we're gonna, we're gonna generate. a Bunch of foobars, four columns, uh, some random numbers in there. Uh, let's take a quick look once it's up and running. Good, nice. Um, group by A. Yeah, group by column A, give us a sum of it. Uh, Woohoo, good stuff. Yeah, it's foo bars. I'm going to group by A and B. What was B? B was this one, two, three. Uh, yeah. Good. Yeah, as expected. Plotting. I'm going to pull my plot lip real quick. Okay, um, again, just to do, just generate a bunch of random numbers, um, throw some column names on top. So I have four columns um, of a thousand random numbers each, you know, just normally distributed. That I did in pandas. Now I'm going to cast it over to, uh, uh, to a Koala's data frame. Yeah, uh, there it is. I can do a cumulative sum. 
yeah, I hope you, this is now uh, my new Qualys data frame and I can go display it, plot it using, um, so now we're talking about, yeah, so it's actually doing, this is now matplotlib uh, visualization coming in. Um, all the other standard, standard stuff, you know, that's data related, writing to, you know, um, taking uh, that data frame that we had, writing it to a CSV, and I'm going to read it back in, yeah, and just print out the head, uh, the first 10 rows there. Um, good, good, a quick, uh, a quick uh, write and read back in. Again, everything is a Spark job. Right, you can actually go in and view all the various stages um, of these Spark jobs happening. So, you know, it's, it's parallel computing, so everything is um, a lot of partition mapping. Uh, yeah, so all this is done now blindly for you. You just, you just use your Pandas API. Um, Parquet users. Parquet? Parquet. We got Parquet. Yeah. So again, here. Writing to Parquet, reading it back up. Uh, what did I miss? Oh, it already exists. Mm. I can do a mode overwrite. Okay, sorry about that. There's a mode overwrite. I'm not going to change code here. Um, and even ORC, ORC tables uh, can. Yeah. So, depend, uh, so regardless of the, you know, these are all very popular. Uh, uh, these files already exist. Yeah, I had to do an overwrite there. Um, um, these are part K and um, ORC are very popular um, big data file formats. Yeah, I would say part K is number one. Um, so all the various big data tools, you know, your hive, pig, uh, all the animals in the Apache Hadoop Zoo support uh, part K. Um, and of course, Spark itself. Yeah. Any questions? on this right now so far, or on Databricks. So as I mentioned, I have a small cluster running. <clears throat> yeah, this guy's tiny. It's really just for demos. I got one worker with, yeah, this one has four cores, 14 GB. Uh, in terms of libraries, yeah, I have Qualys just installed, yeah? It came in via, Pi, uh, via the PyPy repository, yeah. Um, Okie dokie. I think I have a couple more slides. Uh, I think one more, yeah. Um, great blog post recently uh, by actually one of, one of our customers that, that's um, processing a few, they have a few petabytes that they're now running their Pandas API on. Yeah, that's just prior to this unheard of. Yeah. So we're using the Pandas API, but the underlying, yeah, it's a, it's a Spark query. It's comparing between Qualys and Pandas, not uh, Qualys with the uh, original database query. Sorry, no, I didn't understand your question. Sorry, anyway, uh, is there any idea to reduce the processing time in terms of normal database query by using Qualys? It will be the same. It will be the same, yeah, because, on to, on, because you're still, ultimately, you're using Spark data frames. The only difference between pandas and quals, yeah, and it's actually a bad comparison because pandas is single-threaded memory bound to a server, quals is fully parallelized. Um, you're right, your compute is distributed, your memory is distributed. No, no, it's just a, it's just a thin thin API on top. Yes, ultimately this is just translating your Panda methods into standard Spark data frame me methods. That's all, yeah, that's all. It's really just a quick, does a little quick translator, yeah. So um, performance wise, it'll be, I mean, there's very minimal overhead on top. So it'll be, you're basically gonna get it as fast as standard Spark data frames. Yeah, thank you. No, that was a very good question, thank you. Yeah, and, I mean, that's, that is ultimately the whole point. It's just, uh, come in and still use the same uh, Spark data frame uh, um, engine, but 
just use Pandas API on top of it. Uh, how about the GPU supports uh, for the Thai spa? Uh, GPU support is is available. Um, this is for, it was fully available, actually. If I can, let me jump back into the environment here. Let me go clusters. Um, if I were to make a new one, so here I'm using the um, Azure Databricks, right? So, I'll, so for example, I can pick a runtime which supports uh, GPUs or not. Let me let me get the whole runtimes up. Yeah, uh, we have a whole machine learning uh, runtime as well. But uh, the one I'm using is a standard CPU one. Yeah, I could jump in, pick a GPU-based one. And here, it's in the worker types, is this visible in the back? Sorry, I should have checked this earlier. Let me zoom, bump in a little bit. Um, you can actually come in and select which type of GPUs, um, you know, which type of Azure instances you like with, with uh, that GPU support. By the way, this ML runtime that I mentioned, this guy, or 6.0 ML, um, this one has all the popular um, machine learning and deep learning frameworks pre-configured, pre-installed. So scikit-learn, PyTorch, TensorFlow, um, and, and, the, on, and the, all the dependencies, all the CUDA stuff is uh, pre-configured, pre-installed. Yeah. And if you want to paralyze actually scikit-learn jobs, you can do that to a large extent using a few packages. So let me actually talk about quickly. So here's the koalas, yeah. Um, it's actually went live, so you can see where's the, I think the latest thing on here, yeah, it was like four, it was 10, where's the license? Uh, yeah, five months ago. This is probably the first commit, one of the first commits that came in, five months ago, yeah. Um, yeah, feel free. It's, uh, if you want to install it, it's pretty tough. You can do it, you know, one or two ways. Pip or Conda. Um, by the way, um, yeah, so just go, go via Pip or go one or the other, right? Don't mix Pip and Conda, please. You will break your machine, right? And any <laughs> um, same with PySpark. Actually, PySpark is now available as a, as a Pip install. So if you want to, you want to actually leverage PySpark on your laptop, that is your laptop has eight cores itself. You want to parallelize your jobs on, on the cross those eight cores. You can do a pip install PySpark, a pip install Koalas, copy and paste your, uh, basically just rerun your pandas code, a uh, few, you know, PDs to KSs, and that's it. You're now um, leveraging all eight cores for doing your uh, uh, pandas workload. Yeah. So, uh, when I time we doing pandas, uh, use a lot of aggregations when I time we code by. So, is it all supported with all those features? Um, everything, anything that can be paralyzed, we plan on paralyzing. Yes, I will plan on supporting as part of the um, Koala's API. Um, some won't. There's some that are intrinsically uh, serial, sequential. So, those is those good, it's going to wind up being um, single threaded. But if it won't throw the errors, it just like will execute sequentially. Yes, yes, all right, yeah, the whole point, yeah, no, no. It will exist, so just in the back, yeah, it won't be a Spark job, it'll be a, actually a regular Python job, yeah, yeah. One more thing I want to talk about, this is a side, uh, so let me see, SK Learn. <clears throat> so that's one of our projects. We have this other project um, called Spark SK Learn. Let me bump this up a little more. Um, this is for all you scikit-learn users. You now have a framework of, uh, of basically distributing um, a lot of your um, scikit-learn jobs. Specifically, if you want to do any sort of uh, parameter tuning for your models, like you know, doing a grid search with a cross-validation, you actually you know you can, you continue using your grid search CV method, and this guy will actually go in and distribute um, the various modeling training tasks that are done with different parameters um, uh, in parallel, right? They're all independent. Sorry, just a very side, uh, side topic here, but uh, it, is, it is one of our, one of our other uh, open source uh, projects that we're, uh, we're involved with in the, in the Python space. Okay, back to pandas and stuff. Um, 
Good. Um, yeah, um, Apache 2.0 license, please feel free to contribute. There's still some, uh, some methods that have yet to be implemented, some, some Pandas methods that have yet to be implemented on Koala, so that's an ongoing thing. Um, we have a big team. Uh, I think we have, uh, within Databricks, we have 10 engineers on this. And externally, there's, uh, I think there's six, seven other companies that are um, contributing to the, to the open source project. Yeah. And then you have your individual con uh, contributors as well out there. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Um, again, Ben Sadegi is my handle on LinkedIn, GitHub, and, uh, and Twitter. By the way, any Julia users in, in the room? Julia, no Julia. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you very much. So, anybody got any questions for Ben here? Uh, yeah, I have a question. So, could you tell me your, uh, tell us your experience? Like, for example, like if we use a pan, like pandas, and if we load up very big data such as the, like more than ten GB or something, then process gets to start. But like. Have you tested like how much data can be handled by Quora? Do you have any like, like POC or petabytes? Oh, petabytes. Yes, oh. yes. It's a big. So on the, on ultimately, it's going to go down to uh, Spark Engine. So Spark and, and Spark can, is is a is a big data solution. It'll handle petabytes. So you could have yeah, you could have a pandas call that's ultimately doing. Uh, and that was the blog post I had earlier. This one. These guys are doing petabytes. Yeah, using Pandas API. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. Thank you. Great question. Thank you. Any other questions? OK, if no more questions, then I think we can end the session here. So if you guys want to speak to Ben privately, I believe he's still available. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you, everyone.